Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to check out this Interval 51.2 volt 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. A big heavy steel case monster, supposed to have a big BMS display, all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm going to see how it's made. Let's get right into it. So before I get any further into the video, I wanted to let you know that this review will be slightly different than some others you have seen on my channel. This is not my battery. This is my friend's battery. He just recently picked it up, brought it over to me and wanted me to check it out for him to see if it was worth what he paid for it. He paid a little bit more than some of the plastic case batteries. Thought he was getting a good deal on this metal case unit versus some of the other brands. Uh, this company is a lesser known or kind of an unknown brand. So he basically wanted me to do a teardown on it, a quality check, and he asked could I share the video with everybody else in case they were curious. So that's what I'm doing today. So I'll give you a little overview of the outer case of the battery right here and show some of the accessories and specifications on this in case you're curious about it. Uh, looks very similar to some other metal case batteries. We have a user interface switch right here. Up there we got a cell case vent, RS45 port, our two terminals right here. The only decals or logos we have. Uh, indicating the company brand right here, Interval right across the top with a address for the Bluetooth. I'll show you the Bluetooth on this battery as well. You know, just some generic information right here. No decals or stickers on that side. No decals or stickers on that side. And I'll show you the back in just a second. Then on the back side, opposite from the switch and terminal side, we just have model 51.2105 voltage capacity. It's energy. I mean, just, just basic stuff. And if you noted from the shot a moment ago, of course, the battery has two carry handles on top. This battery is weighing in at about 114 pounds. It's pretty heavy. And the thing of note, safety wise on all these golf cart or metal case batteries right here, please use the carry handles because a lot of these have some real sharp edges on the top of the cover right here. And you can cut your finger if you grab up under here without gloves. So that's another reason to use the included handles. And the battery, of course, has a display, RS-45 communication cord to go from the battery to the display, a user manual. And it also comes with a charger, but he did not bring the charger. Charger's not here, but it is included in the package for this battery. So checking out the user manual right here, pretty basic, just general stuff right there. Uh, how to hook everything up, what's included. Right there is what's included. So there's a charger, you know, everything I showed you already, and some screws and stuff too, I guess. So it also looks like the company has several different voltage batteries. So they got some 36 volt golf cart batteries, a 72 amp hour, uh, 48 volt one right here. Let's see which one are we working on. This one right here, it's got a 20 inch case. And it looks like there's a mini case with a 105 cell in it. So this one's supposed to be 105. There's your information right there. Pause if you wanna look at it. If not, we'll continue on. So here's the back of the display, JBD BMS right there. So if you got your display cord right here, you just plug it in, make sure it's aligned. It's got a little clip in there. Oh, it popped right out of the metal casing. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to start. Okay, so that may not have been clipped in good enough for see the displays have these little clips that are supposed to hold into their little brackets or whatever. So let me snap it back in there. They may have too thick of a bracket for the clips. Uh, I mean, it's, it's in there all right. I don't know if it's gonna be good enough for a golf cart. It doesn't fit too well, so be aware of that. If you were looking at that, uh, you might need some sealant or adhesive on the back right here. So maybe a bead of RTV silicone or something to hold that display in a little bit better because if you put this on a golf cart like it's designed, I guarantee that display is gonna pop out on the first little rough road you get on. Anyhow, back to what I was doing. I'll put the little bracket off to the side because I'm not going to need that for what I'm doing. And then connect the RS-45 right here on the side of the battery. It's got alignment teeth. Just line it up. There we go. Thread it down like that for your connections. And let's see if we got power on the display without the switch being on. Yes, there is power on the display. Discharge switch is off. So let me turn the switch on right there. That should energize. Okay, it is on. All right, let me hit the discharge switch right there. Should see it go off right here. Can I turn it on here without the switch being on? No. Okay, so it looks like they've got it wired right to start with. We'll find out more in just a minute. So I'm gonna try that again with the meter connected to see if we actually shut off all voltage to the terminals. Excellent. Works just like it's supposed to. 
All right, turn it back on. Instantly have voltage live at the terminals again. Good. So here's the BMS reporting data for the battery right here. This is the Overkill Solar app. That's the model of the board in this unit right here, the AP21S. And I'm pretty sure that is the contactor base, the heavy duty BMS. And see the manufacturing date of the board was May 1st, 2025. There's no event counts in this battery because it's not been used yet. So here's some of the program values in the battery. They're calculating the capacity at 111 amp hours and a cycle count is 88.8 .8 amp hours. There's your cell full minimal voltages, things like that. Your balancer is enabled at 3.3 volts per cell. And then our temperature protections right here, voltage protections, not too bad on this one compared to some. And our charge overcurrent is a 10 second trigger delay and discharge overcurrent a 10 second trigger delay. And our level two overcurrent 440 amps for 80 milliseconds or the manual indicates that it can do 400 amps for 30 seconds. So now I'm gonna open the lid on this battery, check out the internal build quality, being a 105 amp hour battery. I hope we got some EVE LF105s in here. We'll see in just a minute. And one thing I noticed right off the bat, taking the lid off of this battery as soon as I was taking the screws loose, you could feel the cover, you know, popping up and, and moving. So there's no sealant, it appears, underneath the cover right here. Most of these metal case golf cart batteries have a gasket or sealant in there to keep moisture from getting into the battery pack itself. So while you have a little vent on the side, I don't know when there's not even a seal right here. Your venting is accomplished by not having a seal in the top of the lid right there. So... Uh, don't let this one get wet if you get this one and uh yeah that's kind of disappointing on a golf cart battery it's qc pass though all right take the cover off right here see what we got going on so there's an overview of how the cell pack is constructed right there not too bad and then the cells right here they are eve cells you can see the o4 qcb right there on the cells i'm gonna run them through a scanner just to make sure but uh, those numbers correlate with eve production numbers. i just picked a random cell in this battery that i could get a good shot on so here's the qr code right there there's the numbers i'm gonna run it through a scanner and see what i can come up with So as you saw from the QR code scan, these are EVE LF105 cells, which is a good cell choice, especially for golf cart applications, what this battery is intended for. So if we look at the cells and how they're put into the case right here, you can see we have foam around the outside perimeter of the cells. There's a fiberboard or epoxy board separator right here between each group of eight right here to make up our 16S string. Same thing over here, we have foam between everything. Then the cell support structure, the hold down bracket right here has foam between the steel and the tops of the cells as well. Okay, a little unique on this battery compared to some other ones. We have laser welds on each of the terminals right there, but they also have a machine screw in the top as well. So just letting you know that just a little short machine screw right there. So laser weld around the outside, then a little tapered machine screw for additional support, I guess, or where they didn't want to weld the center or however they decided to do that. So a little bit different than some others. All right, and since this is a golf cart battery, you know, it's going to be bouncing down the road or trails or whatever you're using your golf cart for. And uh, there's no wire loom or nothing right here. And this is a sharp, sharp metal edge right there. I mean, that is razor sharp. So all the balance slates are just kind of you know, zip tied down the side here uh, through their little pre-drilled holes, but they didn't include any loom. So I'm imagining over time, you may can get some rubbing and things going on with some of your balance leads. So, you know, that's a detractor. I wish they would have put some wire loom on there. So letting you know all I'm seeing with this brand. And there are three NTC sensors in this battery. One is gonna be a chip on board on the BMS itself. There is one sensor sitting right there glued down to the top of the cells and another sensor sitting right there glued down to the top of the cells. So on the main pack, negative and positive, is they have a welded on bus bar, welded on tab right here, extending it past the cell group. Then they use an insulator right here for support to the cell support structure to that steel plate right there. 
so when you tighten down your bolts for your pack total negative and positive it's rigid so you know, that's okay over on the bms side of the battery you can see the steel support plate right there that the bms is mounted to so they just drop the board down in there these are four gauge silicon jacketed leads so this is from the battery side this is the power side coming out right here very short positive lead but you got this real long set of negative lead in this battery so let me check the connections okay here that's good that's good all right so nothing was loose per se it's just the heat shrink didn't make good contact on their terminal right there so it's letting the super flexible silicone wire move around i've tried to make sure you know everything's good right there connection wise the wire inside the crimp is not moving got some kind of silicone sealant the same thing they use all on the balance leads and things like that let's see how tight this is well not very so I wasn't mistaken that there was something a little bit loose, but just mistaken on what was loose. Anyhow, since this is already that loose, let me see what the terminal, how it's built, and see if it's true copper and all that good stuff. Oh, there's another thing. Check that out. They got an eight millimeter ring terminal and then a little M6 bolt right there through a M8. So that's not standard procedure and not the best mode of operation. So it is tin coated copper. You can see right there where I scratched some of the tin coating off and you know, exposed the copper underneath. I mean, it's it's on the thin side, it's okay, I guess. But you know, there's an M8 bolt, what that's meant for right there, M8. And then you know, the one they included right here, little M6. So just another recipe for vibration and stuff coming loose if using it in a golf cart. I have to go fix this. I have to recrimp these before I give it back to him just to make sure it's right. So I don't know, you know, it looks like these are uh, M8s as well right there. I didn't even think to check that a minute ago. I wouldn't expect that, but now that I do, I will probably go recrimp that. Recrimp, well, that one is a M6 right there. You can see the difference in the terminals. And I'm not gonna pull the sensors off and break the glue and all that. I've got enough stuff already to fix before I give this battery back to my friend. But I'm going to show you that the sensors are working. JBD boards, no problems with their sensors triggering low and high temp protection if the values are programmed right. The values look good. I'm just going to warm up a couple of these sensors to show you which sensors they are corresponding on the app to show you they are working and reading properly. All right, so this sensor right here, I'll put my finger on it, warm it up. It should be, I think this one's probably temp sensor number two. All right, there we go. We see that sensor warming up, 62.3.5, etc. And then this one over here should be sensor number three. So I'm gonna put my finger on that one. So we should see this one come up right here because usually the way these boards are programmed, sensor one's always the chip on board on these BMSs. So there we go. Temp sensor three is coming up and reading. A little more extreme temperature rise. So right here. All right, you saw that. And back to sensor three. Then I'll blow down on the BMS a little bit and get a little rise on the BMS sensor to make sure it's reading properly. So there we go, there's your sensor number one down on the board. All right, I'm happy with that. I have no, no issue worrying about this unit triggering on a higher low temp protection. So I'm gonna tell you what I think about this Intervol battery. Now my friend paid $1,079 for this Intervol battery. Now remember, there's premium cells and a what I consider a premium board, a JBD AP series board meant for huge loads of golf carts, things like that. So 1,079 bucks compared to, let's say the closest comparison, a Vader is roughly $1,600 for a battery with the, you know, pretty much they're, they're almost clones of each other. Uh, the Vader's a little bit better quality inside as far as you know wire management, things like that. But the cells and the board are the same. So if you're looking for a metal case battery, and you're not scared to put a little hands-on work into it, put a little time into it. A decent little discount there from a Vader to an Intervolt. But I personally wouldn't consider this battery good to go out of the box. If you watched the video, you saw some of the detractors and things in the battery. Now, as far as a more budget-friendly battery, good to go out of the box. You know, it doesn't have premium EVE cells or the AP series board, but the little all pond plastic case battery right now for 729, that's going to be hard to beat. It comes with a charger and a display, you know, similar to what this comes with for, you know, roughly a $350 discount. 
And there's also the Timgo as a viable option, even though they've got that little quirk with their you know, BMS. I've covered that as well. So I've got a video on this one, a video on this one. And I've been into several Vader batteries and, you know, just pretty much a clone of this with better build quality. So it depends on what your goals are. I don't really see the need for a metal case battery. You're going to be carrying around a lot of extra weight. You should need the extra capacity with them 105 cells and that monster board. If you've got a custom golf cart, if you've got just a plain old club car precedent or something like that, not hopped up, those plastic case batteries, and you know, for that price, that's kind of hard to beat. So that about wraps up today's video. A little bit different than usual, but hopefully it was still a helpful video for you. I'm trying to show you what a lesser known or unknown brand, what you're going to get with them. Special thanks to my friend for letting me check out the battery. I will fix it up before I send it back. Do you have an Intervol battery? Any of you out there experience this brand, have any problems or issues with it? Have you ever even heard of this brand? And what about the other brands I mentioned a few moments ago? Do you have any of those or any experience with those? I always appreciate hearing your real world experiences with these different brands and different products. Let me know in the comments section down below if you have any of those. Hope you enjoyed the video today. As always, thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one.